Note carefully what he says, for the sentence is a bit awkward. The very minimum postulation of freedom from contradiction is acceptable by theology only upon the very limited interpretation by the scientific theorist upon the scarcely tenable one that theology will not assert an irremovability in principle of the contradictions it is bound to make good. Uh, das ist ein deutsches Phrase. Eine, deutsches, eine deutsche Phrase, yeah. It's, um, bad, it's good German, but bad English. I'll read it again. The very minimum postulate of freedom from contradiction is acceptable by theology only, so the minimum is acceptable <coughs> only, not the, not the maximum, but just the minimum is acceptable only on the very limited interpretation which a scientist, scientific theorist would call a scarcely tolerable one that theology will not assert an irremovability in principle of the contradictions it is bound to make good. This somewhat awkward sentence, first of all, admits the law of contradiction, if at all, only in a very minimum application. Its full logical extent is ruled out immediately. In the second place, the sentence does not really say that even a restricted use of the law is permissible, for it does not assert that contradictions can be removed. It merely asserts that it cannot be asserted that they cannot be removed. But if perchance a contradiction can be removed, then as the immediately following sentence says, the propositions in which it asserts their removal will be propositions concerning the free action of God and so not propositions that remove the contradiction from the world. It is hard to see what Bart means here. Someone might wish to defend him by supposing that although theological propositions may seem to us to be contradictories, they are not <coughs> contradictories in God's mind. Unfortunately, the passage does not assert that God's mind is free from contradiction. Nor, even if it were, does Bart explain how a sane man can possibly believe what he thinks is contradictory. One thing is clear, however. In his various writings, Bart made use of Kierkegaard's paradox, his eternity versus time infinite qualitative difference. Now, Van Til stresses qualitative difference. He doesn't use the word infinite, but uh, he is uh, very in emphatic on qualitative difference, even though he doesn't indicate at all what the qualitative difference is. And totally other. I don't think Van Til uses the exact two words totally other, but uh, if you read his material, you can try to find out what he does mean. Now, when Bart shows so much dependence on Kierkegaard, one would normally suppose that he remains basically irrationalistic unless he clearly and emphatically rejects the irrationalism of these terms. <clears throat> but <clears throat> by ambiguous or indefinite language, he avoids both outright assertion and outright denial of contradiction. <clears throat> the general tendency <clears throat> is toward irrationalism. Consider his discussion of the sixth criterion of science, which is, all propositions are capable of being broken up into axioms and theorems and are susceptible of proof on this basis. Now, <clears throat> the student of Bart notes with interest that his volume on Anselm, Fides Quaerens Intellectum, 
seems to accept and apply this criterion. Yet his church dogmatics rejects it utterly. Theology can never be made systematic. God's word is not a thing to be described, nor is it a concept to be defined. It is neither a content nor an idea nor a fixed total of revealed propositions. Theology cannot regard itself as a member of an ordered cosmos, but only as a stopgap in an unordered one. In view of the biblical teaching that God is omniscient, that he exercises providential care, and has seen the end from the beginning, no one can regard Bart's unordered cosmos as a Christian conception. <clears throat> but its irrationalism cannot be mistaken. I mean, you can't mistake it for something other than irrationalism. The cosmos isn't a cosmos. It's, it's not ordered, it's chaotic. Yet sometimes his procedure, not only in Anselm, but even in church dogmatics, seems to utilize axioms and systematization. Once again, however, when he answers Strauss, the irrationalism recurs. Strauss had argued against making the testimony of the Spirit and the authority of Scripture the basis of all theology by asking, who can now attest the divinity of this witness? This he called the Achilles heel of the Protestant system. Barth seemingly approves the, of the question, but replies, what Strauss failed to see is that there is no Protestant system. Thus, Barth may be described as an irrationalist who wishes to obscure the fact somewhat. Other contemporary theologians are more forthright in their irrationalism. Reinhold Niebuhr explicitly makes use of Kierkegaard's absurdity and says, there is no escape from the rational absurdity of the real self because it is at once in time and beyond time. It is spatial and yet non-spatial. Yet this double fact, which outrages the sense of rational coherence, is a fact of daily experience. Well, that's a nice sentence, isn't it? Let me read it again. This is from Reinhold Niebuhr. <coughs> I did tell you about Niebuhr going to church, didn't I? Oh. <coughs> Uh, he liked to go to the Episcopal Church, uh, it, particularly, he says, if there was a good boys' choir. The boys' choir had to be good. And then he walked out before the sermon because he only wanted the service, not the sermon. Someone, uh, and if you know the Episcopal form, you know they recite the Apostles' Creed, and uh, someone twitted him for saying the Apostles' Creed, when, of course, he didn't believe any of it. They twitted him for saying it. And he replied, I don't say it, I sing it. Uh, here is a Reinhild Niebuhr. There is no escape from the rational absurdity of the real self, because it is at once in time and beyond time. It is spatial and yet non-spatial. Yet this double fact, which outrages the sense of rational coherence, is a fact of daily experience. End of quote. Now, <clears throat> the fact that the self may be spatial in one sense and non-spatial in a different relationship hardly outrages rational coherence. Whether the self is both temporal and eternal may be questioned, but at any rate, this view does not represent Christianity, for orthodox theology teaches that man, because he was created, 
is and always will remain temporal. But the quotation shows clearly enough the irrationality of Niebuhr's religion.